Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Carlos. Welcome back to Family Scuba. I am a technical rebreather diver certified in the KISS Sidewinder. I am decompression certified, advanced rec certified, full cave certified, solo certified, among others. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about um, the maintenance uh, and going through some demonstration on how to take things apart, clean them, put them back together. This isn't intended as a training video. This is intended as uh, a supplement to information you should be getting during your training. Uh, additionally, I talk a lot about how easy these units are to maintain, to keep, to clean. So I thought I would respond to a request uh, to make a video like this. So I hope this is helpful to you. Again, not intended to replace any kind of training. You should be seeking that out on your own. Uh, but this should serve as a very good reference uh, to uh, any questions you might have down the road after your training, or maybe you want, might want to go through this uh, if you're deciding whether or not you want to buy a Sidewinder, if it's for you, or uh, again, uh, if you are going to buy one, uh, something to give you a heads up on what to look forward to. In any case, I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, please leave them at the end of the video or I should say in the comments, um, and I will get back to you. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, I was asked to do a video on maintenance for the Sidewinder. Uh, I have kind of really emphasized on how simple it is, uh, how easy it is to maintain, and um, how much I like it, uh, so I thought it would be appropriate to uh, respond to the questions that I've gotten and get this video done. There isn't a whole lot to it. Uh, these are all tools that I got uh, with a, um, a scuba, uh, what is it called, dive repair kit. Came with these small needle nose, with these adjustable uh, pliers. Um, it did not come with this. This is a plastic pick. Uh, they make brass ones. I have a set of brass ones. I prefer the plastic ones. It came with the screwdriver, this Allen uh, key set. Uh, the only thing that didn't come with it, uh, like I said, is this pick. Uh, this three millimeter um, Allen uh, wrench, uh, screwdriver, and uh, this lube. Uh, anytime you work on anything that's O2 compatible or needs to be O2 compatible, uh, you need to use O2 compatible lube. Uh, so anything over 40%, I believe, is what requires uh, something like this. Uh, it is a little bit expensive, um, but this lube will last you uh, quite a long time, actually. You don't need a whole lot uh, when assembling things. Uh, but with that, uh, we'll get to it. I'll kind of move these up a little bit, get them out of the way. Uh, I'll start with um, the uh, diver supply valve. So uh, this thing, generally after a weekend of diving, um, I will. Uh, as you see it here, I'll open the valve up. Um, it would look like this. I'll open the valve up so that uh, you can breathe through it uh, in that position. And then I would just put this in um, a tub of some kind. Uh, I brought this out just for demonstration purposes and to carry everything upstairs from where I store it. But. Um, you can use anything. Uh, I generally will put it in my sink. I'll rinse the sink out and uh, fill it with steramine. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's a food grade um, uh, cleaner. Uh, and uh, it comes in a tablet. You pre-mix it in like a gallon. I'll put two tablets in a gallon and then uh, put warm water in the sink and then pour the contents of the gallon into the sink after it's uh, been mixed pretty well. Um, let that soak for about 20 minutes and then 
uh, let it hang dry is really all you need to do uh, as far as disinfecting it goes. Uh, as far as maintenance, uh, these do need to be taken apart periodically. Uh, and if you've seen some of my other videos, uh, my dive buddy and I, Charlie, like to do quite a bit of tight, uh, dirty cave stuff. So uh, these tend to get uh, pretty grimy after a while. Uh, and you'll feel it in, you know, in the valve when you move it up and down or on and off. This one's not too bad, but it, I can feel it's a little bit uh, grimy. And it's not that hard to take apart, so I don't mind doing it. So to do that, you would pull these out, these C-clips, set those to the side, and then pull the tube out. Still got a little bit of water in it. Um, these, like I said, once they're sterilized and hung to dry, they're fine. They're good to go. Set those aside. They are exactly the same. Um, so there's no real worry about getting those mixed up. The one thing you do need to worry about is how these are installed. So on my unit, uh, when I exhale, uh, my exhaled gas goes to the right side of my body uh, through that hose and then into the, the canister, the right canister through the counter lung, out the left canister, um, and then up through the left hose, and then inhale through this side. So if you can see that on the inhale side, uh, there's a mushroom valve that allows gas to flow through it. If, you, if I blow through the mouthpiece, the mushroom valve will then seat. It's the exact same on the other side as this one is. And then it won't allow gas to pass through. The only way it can pass through is through the right side. So to get these out, that's what you need the needle nose pliers for. Um, grab one of the tabs and it should come out fairly easily, just that easily. Uh, and there's not much to it. There's an O-ring on here and then the uh, rubber mushroom valve. As you can see, you can just easily uh, lift that up, wipe it down, clean it. If there's any debris in here, um, clean that out. Try not to rub any sand or hard grit on, you know, on, on this thing. You know, try either blowing it off or uh, rinsing it off rather than trying to rub it off. You don't want to damage this rubber uh, seal. It's, it's pretty thin. Uh, this one's actually not that bad. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that, uh, but I clean it pretty often, so they, I tend to keep them pretty clean. But anyway, uh, again, these are also interchangeable. This can go on this side. Uh, you just have to flip them. Um, I like to keep things where they come out of, so I'll put this on the left side. And then to get this one out, you just pull back on the uh, gasket on the mushroom valve. Same thing, grab the one of the tabs, making sure you don't grab the gasket itself and just pull straight out, come straight out. And there is an O-ring on that as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is to remember um, you know, up is on, down is off. So this is the orientation of the valve. I also have the clamp to my mouthpiece on the top, so I know that's the top. So I can't accidentally do that. There's also a hole here when you close the valve. I don't know if you can see that valve moving on the inside. But when you close the valve, uh, there is a groove on the inside, on the inner sleeve. Uh, that allows you to push water out of the mouthpiece in case you were ever wondering uh, what happens to that water when you remove the uh, DSV underwater. So anyway, <clears throat> the next step would be to remove uh, the on-off uh, handle. And to do that, I don't know if you can see, but there is an Allen uh, bolt in there. You just have to get in there, hold this, 
and unscrew it. I can't see what I'm doing. And you just get that out of there. So I'm sure I'll repeat it, but uh, I'll say it here because it can't be said enough. Uh, these are still just plastic. They're a composite Delrin material. If you over tighten them, uh, they will uh, likely strip out. So there's no need to crank them down uh, finger tight. Uh, until they stop and then maybe you know an eighth of a turn or a sixteenth of a turn is, is good enough. Uh, there is an o-ring on here. Uh, you can remove that and clean it out, uh, inspect it for damage. Um, you know make sure there's no debris under there, uh, which this one is really clean and then put that back together. So we'll set that to the side. So the bolt is out, or at least off of there. I gotta still bring it all the way out. It comes out. <clears throat> it's just a stainless steel Allen screw. And then to get the sleeve out, I will, um, uh, just push it out with my thumbs, it, it comes out fairly quickly, or easily, I should say. It's a little wet, so it's harder than normal. And you just push it out. And keeping in mind the orientation, you really can't get this mixed up, but um, when you slide it back in, uh, you don't want to slide it in this way. That groove has to be on the bottom for that hole. So it has to go in this way. That's the groove I was telling you about. So this has three O-rings on it. The two outer sealing O-rings. And then the mouthpiece O-ring. Uh, those generally will have to come apart or come out. I'll take them off. Uh, if there's any sign of any kind of grit, this has nothing on it right now. So I'm not going to remove them. Well, I'll remove one just to make sure there isn't something underneath. Pinch them, grab them with a, a pick. I like the plastic one, like I said. And uh, there's nothing here. Nothing. Uh, you can clean that out with a napkin or a lint-free towel or something and then put it back together uh, I'm just going to I think lube everything up clean it up uh, lube it up and then put it put it back in but that's that's pretty much it that's the whole thing it's part there's nothing else in there uh, you can take these o-rings off if needed if they're grimy or need to be cleaned up uh, these are actually pretty good uh, I really did expect this to be dirtier than it is, but uh, it's a little bit on there. Uh, but that's it. Uh, if they do get really, really sandy or grimy on the inside, you're going to start getting grooving on here. Um, that's from the grit or from the sand in there. And as you turn it, it just starts to bite on the on the plastic on the Delrin and it starts to make these lines uh, I don't see that being um, an issue in terms of sealing uh, just because they're this isn't sealing anything it um, um, it's mainly going to cause some maybe clearance issues down the road um, but uh, you know, something to keep in mind if, if this thing starts to get really wobbly in there uh, or, you know, when this is connected and you pull it up and down and it just feels loose or it feels um, like it's causing an issue, you're more than likely going to have to replace this anyway. Uh, and they're not very expensive uh, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but keep in mind you will get some grooves here uh, that should not 
uh, impair the function of, uh, of the valve of the DSV. So I will grab a napkin and clean this up a little bit, dry it off, re-lube everything. Uh, I can still feel it still feels lubed up. Uh, but uh, then I'll put it back together. Okay, so I got a napkin. Dry this down a little bit. Normally, if I take the all rings off, I'll just wipe them down, feel, you know, visually and physically inspect for any deformities, any nicks, cuts, or anything like that. And I don't see anything on this one. I take some of this. Lube doesn't take a whole lot. They really just need to be shiny all around. It doesn't need to be like a whole lot of access left over. It's just a waste at that point. Slide that over without overstretching them. And put some on the other two. When I first took this apart, the very first time I, I looked at it or I got it, uh, I took it apart before it even hit the water. And this whole whole thing was, you know, lubed up and greasy. I, I find that it just, um, sand and grit just tends to stick to everything when it's all greasy, but maybe it helps with some of this, but I don't know. I don't put a whole lot on there, just residual for my fingers is what goes on there. Uh, clean the inside the DSV. Same thing, it's got the same grooves um, mirroring the ones on the inside tube, on the tube. Um, like I said, it, as long as uh, where the o-rings sit, where they ride, um, as long as that surface is okay, uh, everything is going to seal just fine. So remember to orient this the correct way. Uh, this goes up, the groove goes down, and I try to get the hole lined up at the top there from the start that way. I don't have to move it around too much. And it's, there it is. So get this centered as best as possible. Easiest way to do this, I found, is to work that. I almost had it. Work 
put that bolt in there first and just start it a couple threads until it is flat or even there and then it won't come out. Uh, this has a rounded Allen tip on it so it uh, it, it won't, the bolt won't stay on there otherwise I would just put it on there and then just drop this in like that. Uh, but not a big deal. Line this up there and then just run it down carefully making sure you don't cross thread anything And again, normally I would take that uh, O-ring out and clean it. Oh, I did take it out. So I gotta back this back out again. So this O-ring here, just like every other O-ring, inspect it for nicks, cuts, for cracks, and put a dab. on it and put it back on make sure it's seated on there make sure that the mating surfaces are all clean it that is the DSV DSV and then these again I would just lube and get that get the hoses back on um, these again are the same they're the exact same they're interchangeable no worries about putting those in uh, you know one side or the other incorrectly you just have to orient them the correct direction I will generally just uh, clean this out a little bit I would be more concerned about cleaning everything um, more thoroughly, maybe use a blow gun to blow some of the debris off, but they're actually not bad. I was surprised. Um, same thing with these to get the O-rings off. Uh, you can pinch. My hands are all greasy now. but. Pinch and bring these off. You can check this for sand and debris and stuff. Clean this off. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my camera shut off. Um, apparently it was overheating. Uh, so I turned down the resolution in frames per second. Maybe that'll help. Uh, in any case, uh, like I said, you get the O-ring in, um, get this all cleaned up, make sure you don't have anything on the, um, 
you know, on the contact surfaces. Uh, this is where it's sealing. Sorry. The lip of this rubber seal is just seating up against uh, this lip on the plastic insert. So that needs to be clean of debris. If, uh, if there's anything on there, this isn't going to seal. <clears throat> so again, um, you need to remember what the direction of travel for the loop gas is. Uh, mine goes from the right side uh, clockwise direction. Uh, if I was looking right at it or if it's on, you know, if I'm wearing it. Uh, so gas has to be able to exit. Um, to the right so this one is going to go this way I already put lubed it up uh, make sure you get it on there nice and flat push it in and then until it seats on this one it's just down until it seats and then it's in uh, same thing with this one uh, while the camera was cooling down I went ahead and checked it uh, it is clean, free of debris. Uh, go ahead and take a little bit of lube and put it on the o-ring, which would normally be removed if this was a lot dirtier. And again, direction of travel, it has to come uh, from the left side in as I inhale. So we'll get that on there nice and even, press it in, straight down until it stops. And now I have them oriented in the correct position. So then I would just uh, either remove these and clean this all up or just put some lube on it, which I think is what I'll do because everything seems pretty clean. And then um, test your mushroom valves. So that's really all that there is to this. There's some O-rings on here. You can see they still have lube on them. I'll probably still wipe those down and clean them up again uh, and then get this all put back together. But that was the basically the gist of doing the DSV. For the sake of time, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. So this is the computer with the wired head. Um, again, I don't have a problem with it being wired. It uh, works just fine for me. Uh, this does unscrew. There is a fitting there and then a, uh, um, a you know, a nut style uh, end to the wires. So you would just take that off screw it and send this in for service if you know when the time comes uh, as far as servicing this I don't do much to this uh, I will take this off um, off the canister and set it to the side I generally will just let it sit on a towel like that so that moisture comes down and um, away from the sensors uh, if you if you leave it like this it could puddle you don't and damage the sensors uh, prematurely. I just leave it like that and let it sit, let it dry. Uh, to take this off, it's just a nut. Um, and then this plastic, uh, the, this plastic piece holding all the O2 sensors slides out. Um, and then you can pop all this out, clean it up if you need to. This doesn't look too bad. I uh, probably could stand some cleaning. Uh, water and vinegar will get this thing looking like brand new. Uh, I'm not going to do that today because it doesn't look too bad. But water and vinegar gets uh, all of that uh, sorb dust off very, very easily. Gets it looking uh, brand new. Um, one thing I will mention, and I hope you can see it in there, these connectors... Um, they're not like normal connectors where you have to pinch and pull. These you have to actually uh, have to back this out. That tab gets pushed out and then these connectors come out very, very easily, uh, which 
you should do on a regular basis, um, not just when replacing these, just check them for corrosion and stuff like that. Uh, but we'll leave that for another day. And then when this comes goes back together, make sure that none of these uh, wires are, um, you know, being pressed against the threads or in a weird way where they're going to chafe. Um, once that's seated, just make sure that they're lined up so that this is where the hole is. Um, that way they all get uh, installed correctly and uh, the gas flows over them uh, evenly. So that's that. Um, this has two big O-rings on it. Those come off very easily as you can see. These I've gotten probably five, six hours and uh, they're still fairly clean because I wipe them down every time. So I'm not gonna bother with those too much, but same as with any other O-ring, um, take them off and clean them. And then this is your overpressure valve. Uh, this does come apart. Um, it unscrews from the head fairly easily. Um, it, you would wanna wipe this down that up. That's the other end of that uh, the threaded rod that holds the O2 sensors in place. Um, you could take that out if you really needed to to clean everything up or if you needed to send anything in, uh, but not really something you would normally do. Uh, but that's that. And then this thing, uh, generally all you really need to do with this is maybe rinse it out. I did take it apart one time because uh, we got it really, really dirty, uh, dragging it through some muddy sand. Uh, this has an O-ring right here. It's like every other O-ring. Inspect it, clean the mating surfaces, lube it up. Uh, to take this apart, there's three screws on here. Um, to service it, um, you really don't need to take those screws out unless you're going to be messing with that um, gasket which is similar to the mushroom valves uh, normally I can just um, rinse this out and leave it be uh, if you want me to take it apart I can uh, but it's like any other um, overpressure valve uh, rinsing it out generally will take care of most of your issues uh, I you know, otherwise I believe there is a video out there for taking these apart. Uh, on there. Just taking a look at it. I was going to take it apart again later and lube it, but I don't want to forget, so I'm just going to lube it now. Just trying to trying to save some time for the sake of not making this a two-hour long video. Get that down there. And tight is all it needs to go. That's good. So that's that. Get that out of the way. And then you have the other head, which has the regulator and the manual addition valve. Uh, I do plan on servicing these when the time comes myself. Um, but uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you know with taking stuff like this apart I do recommend that stuff like this which generally isn't going to be serviced or um, taken apart in the field anyway uh, that you just do it on, a, on like a yearly uh, basis um, you know or, or uh, based off of how often you dive uh, on a schedule like that uh, and just take it into a, a 
you know, to the dealer to where you purchased your rebreather from and have them surface it. Uh, I honestly don't even know if I can get a, a repair uh, surface kit for this regulator, so I may end up swapping this out for a different one that I can service myself. Um, but uh, that's not going to be uh, part of this video that's kind of out of the scope of, of what I wanted to do. Uh, most of what I'm showing you is, is things that you can repair and fix on your own and stuff that can be done also in the field. Uh, so the next one is the um, the I'm having a brain fart. Uh, that's the DSV OPV the um, automatic diluent valve, the ADV, sorry. Uh, for this one, you're gonna need an Allen key. I don't know what size it is. This is, this says 530 seconds. I'm guessing probably a four millimeter. This is a three, I don't know, 530 seconds. Loosen this up, it shouldn't be very tight. Uh, but loosen it up evenly. Think of like uh, the lug nuts on a on a tire. Uh, you don't want to run them all out. Once they're loose, you can, but initially you want to run them out evenly. So this is just four Allen screws, and I'll show you what's on the inside of this thing. So you have your cover, that's it, it's just a nice flat uh, cover, it needs to be flat because it pushes down on this rubber gasket and seals. And you have your diaphragm. This does get dirty, this is exposed, kind of like the um, overpressure valve. Um, but I think I mentioned that the overpressure valve is just like a one from a dry suit. Uh, but uh, those two things are the ones that are exposed to the elements the most. Uh, they need to be, um, you know, cleaned the most often. Uh, this one does have some some debris on it, some sand or something. Uh, it's gritty. Uh, I don't want to really rub that on there too much. I got a, got a cup with water here clean that up and this like any other rubber gasket or o-ring you want to check it for cracks tears uh, any kind of damage uh, you know that that's going to cause you an issue down the road if there's any doubt just replace it that's kind of my motto no sense in uh, finding out you have a problem or you should have replaced it when uh, it's the least convenient at a more inconvenient time. So that looks fine to me. Um, and to replace it, you take screwdriver, unscrew these two halves apart, and um, the kit that I got with the Sidewinder actually came with a spare one, but I mean, you could make this out of anything that'll seal. If you had like a torn neck seal, like a, an old uh, latex one, um, you'd probably make it out of that too, but um, these are cheap enough to keep spares. I My kit came with one. When I replace it, I'll get another one and keep it in the kit. Anyhow, that's that. And then you have where it sits. The, the mating surface here should be free of debris because uh, it's sealing all around here. Uh, so you want to make sure that that's nice and clean and free of any sand or dirt or grime or anything. And then this is the rod. On the other end of the rod, there's a uh, rubber, like a seat, like a, a gas, a 
It almost looks like a lollipop. I should have brought the spare parts kit up here and showed you it, but uh, it basically, uh, when there's air pressure or gas pressure coming from your dill bottle in here, it seats this, uh, that rubber end uh, onto the this fitting here and it it's just it comes out straight it just sticks out straight forward and then when uh, there when you start to descend this diaphragm everything will actually start to collapse and when you inhale this diaphragm will just like on a second stage regulator will will pull down and um, unseat pushed on in this rod unseating the gasket on the inside of this fitting which allows dilio to come in very 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 simple very easy uh, to maintain uh, they also give you one of these in the in the spirit parts kit uh, very simple to replace you just um, take this off uh, pull it through pop the new one in and then screw that back on uh, I won't be doing that uh, here, but it's again, it's simple enough. You literally put two wrenches on here, pop the elbow off. If you have an elbow, otherwise uh, this hose will be connected directly to that fitting. Um, push that rod out, um, put a new one in and you're done. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, making sure that this is all clean and free of any debris or anything. So then to put it back together, line the holes up as best you can. Uh, try to get try to really get them lined up though because when you're running these screws in, uh, it'll catch the edges and it'll just start tearing apart the holes. So get them as best centered as you can. And then same thing with the cover. Set lined up. Get those on there. And again, like I said, this is it's super simple. If this thing, if you had an issue, if you you know, if this didn't seal, you would see bubbles coming out of it. Um, you know, when when you inhale, just kind of like on a regulator, when it breathes a little wet, when that outer diaphragm starts to leak, it will, uh, you know, it'll obviously let water in. Um, but you would know right away, uh, either through your pressure checks uh, or the moment you got in the water and did your bubble check. But it's, it's that simple, that easy to uh, take apart and put back together, uh, repair in the field, super easy. You know, like with anything else on this thing though, uh, you don't need to crank it down. You can see I'm using the short, the long end, and then just the short end of the Allen key to turn it. Um, that's about as tight as it needs to be, uh, as, as much leverage as you need anyway. Uh, again, just like with anything else uh, that you're gonna tighten down, it has more than one bolt and needs to seal properly, uh, run it down nice and evenly, nice and slowly. In a crisscross pattern, and once it is a little more than finger tight after going flush, that's as tight as it needs to go, and that's it. So that is sealed. Uh, what I would do now, that was the last thing uh, that I would normally clean out, is hook this up. Uh, don't need to really have sorb or anything in the canisters just put everything together and uh, connect the dill bottle uh, or just manually blow air into the system through the mouthpiece pressurize it and listen for any uh, hissing any noises anything abnormal um, you know and then uh, adjust repair as necessary 
Uh, but that's it. Uh, as far as the cleaning goes, uh, it seems like it took a really long time, but it really doesn't. It probably takes me about 20 minutes when I'm not trying to explain everything. Um, and, you know, that's taking it apart, cleaning it, and putting it back together. Um, unless it's really, really dirty, which it was when I came back from Florida, then it probably takes me about 30 minutes because then I'm taking every single O-ring off of it and uh, cleaning and uh, putting back on and lubing and so on. But that's pretty much it. Um, any questions or something that I didn't cover or that I kind of skipped over or forgot to talk about, uh, please let me know. Um, and I will try to answer them in the comments or uh, do a follow-up video uh, to try to answer those questions. Thanks for watching. Um, again, I'm going to repeat, this isn't uh, um, a video that's intended to replace uh, real uh, training from an instructor. Um, it's intended to just supplement uh, information that you already know uh, or uh, to um, you know, supplement what you know specifically to this unit. Um, anyhow, uh, again, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you hopefully diving or on the next video. Thanks. Bye.